Hey everyone, it's Bennett, your fantasy football commissioner, with the week two weekly recap for the 2016 Forest Land Mishmash fantasy football season. I am super excited. Can't tell if it's just because I won my game and scored the second most points last week, or if I'm just excited because football is awesome and I love it. Uh, either way, I'm excited to do the update this week, so let's get right into it. We had a low-scoring defensive battle down here with the Baltimore Riot and the Colin Cleansers, so that was the tightest game, so let's take a look at that. There was nothing going on Monday night, but as you can see, the Sunday night game really was the difference in the game. It was really tight. Um, the Riot got six points from Blair Walsh, uh, but not quite enough to overcome the three squeaky points that Adrian Peterson got before he's hurt. Of course, moving forward, I just read, as a matter of fact, just today, that he's actually likely to get surgery on his torn meniscus. So AP, Adrian Peterson, may be out for three to four months. Uh, but in the short term, Jordy Nelson, 18 points, and the three points for Adrian Peterson before he got hurt, just enough for colon cleansers to squeak by, get their first win of the year, and defeat the Baltimore Riot, um, who... Um, you know, kudos for, to Tim for getting his lineup in, dropped Jared Goff, uh, put a full lineup in, uh, even went so far as to get Josh McCown, who, of course, subsequently got hurt, but did play pretty decent and got 16 points before he got hurt. Um, so it looks like um, Tim's back, you know, updating his team, and we appreciate that. Everyone in the league does. Uh, but tough luck loss. They fall to 0-2 nonetheless. All right, I'm going to just go ahead and uh, jump in just to my game just because I'm excited. The Slim Aussies crush the cartel, 179-132. This is the consistency that I like to see, um, and especially with having the game wrapped up before Sunday night. Uh, made it so much more enjoyable because I didn't have to worry about Aaron Rodgers, who really, I'm not really worried about, but definitely had a mediocre game Sunday night. Good news for the Slim Aussies, it was not needed as the wide receivers carried the day. Um, it was interesting because you look at the Thursday night game, uh, you had Eric Decker versus Brandon Marshall. Um, and but I like the Jets' offense this year. I like. I think they're going to score a lot of points. I think Marshall's probably going to end up with more fantasy points than Decker. But at least for this week, Decker uh, did well. Uh, I haven't even looked to see what this questionable injury is. I'll look at that later on my own. Um, but the rookie, Sterling Shepard for the Giants, stepped right in, got a bunch of catches. Number one pick, Andre or DeAndre Hopkins, he's doing his job. He's gotten a um, you know, touchdown in each game. And, of course, there's that new guy, Fuller, really helping the Houston offense. So, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see. It looks like the, uh, the Texans are going to score a lot of points this year. So there was that matchup that the Slim Aussies won. And then, most importantly, you could see this – uh, Jameis Winston Carson Palmer matchup. These guys played in real life, and obviously Carson Palmer and the Cardinals got the, you know, got the better of it. So that was a huge difference. Um, you know, Mike Evans did get the one touchdown pass, so that Jameis Winston Evans combo is going to be good. Um, it just it's going to be hit or miss though. Um, and then the biggest thing, of course, is disappointing Rams offense with Todd Gurley and Tavon Austin. Um, Todd Gurley's just done nothing so far. Of course, it's only two games, but you know, with the quarterback and the Rams offense, it's just not looking good for the Rams, but very early in the season. So a uh, really good game for the Slim Aussies. They get their first win of the year. Uh, the cartel is stuck at 0-2. Uh, we had the husband-wife game, the Stallions and Graceland facing off against each other. This one was really close. I sort of lost track of where... Um, the Stallions pulled away at the end. I think it might have been Ryan Matthews Monday night. I know he had a touchdown late, um, so that definitely helped. And then, um, is that it? Chicago, yeah. So um, the Stallions, you know, neither team really scored a ton of points, but the Stallions squeak ahead even in spite of the quarterbacks, Luck and Wilson not doing much. Um, I never even heard of this guy, Travis Benjamin, so... He must be in for Keenan Allen, so good for the Stallions for either drafting or picking up Travis Benjamin, because as you can see, in Keenan Allen's place, he got six catches, 1,515 yards. Uh, Greg Olson, I mean, I think any 
I think the whole Carolina offense is going to be good this year. So that is helps as well. And just not quite enough um, from the quarterbacks from Graceland to defeat um, the Stallions. So the Stallions go to 2-0. and Graceland, who scored the most points in the league in Week 1, falls back to earth, and uh, they're at 1-1. One and one. And the Stallions sitting pretty at 2-0. and uh, We had cool high-scoring High score of the week versus cool name of the year, Mandarino, losing to third at Oolong. Uh, Mandarino, after beating the Aussies in week one, they fall back, way back, and um, they're down uh, only 128 points. You know, Matt Forte did well. I mean, just talking about, you know, how week to week things can change. You know, A.J. Green, the previous week against the Aussies, had like two touchdowns, a million catches, a million yards. This time... Almost a goose egg, five five yards, probably only two or three catches. Doug Baldwin, um, you know, with with uh, Seattle and Seattle's offense not doing well. Obviously, Doug Baldwin's not going to do well either. Um, so Mandarino crashes back down to earth. Third and Oolong's looking pretty good. Um, obviously, Philip Rivers and Tannehill aren't the sexy quarterbacks, but if if you can get twenty five and twenty seven points each week, you're going to do well. Um, DeMarco Murray busts out. I don't think he had 20 fantasy points all year last year. Um, and, um, you know, nice solid 184 points, just nice even scoring all around. Only one starter in single digits. Um, and even with Blaine Gabbert on the bench, third and Oolong scores the league high, 184 points. They're first place in the match division at 2-0. and oh. Let's see, we talked about this game, we talked about this game, this game, this game, and finally let's talk about the Travelers going to 1-1, one one, last year's um, champ. Am I crazy? Am I losing it? He did win last week. My apologies, <laughs> someone else won. I believe it was Temi, uh, who's our reigning champion. I'm having a little brain freeze here. Pardon my, my uh, forgetfulness. I did notice a couple months ago that now that I'm past 40, I started forgetting a lot of things. So I guess I am getting old, even though I don't really feel old. I do seem to be forgetting a lot of things. Anyway, uh, let's talk about the game. Injury Risk gets his first win in the league. Congratulations, James. Uh, 128 points. As you can see, very top-heavy on the quarterbacks. Um, you know, Matt Ryan, just a quick note of just, you know, how NFL is so unpredictable. And week to week, you never know what you're going to get. Falcons lose at home. Made it close at the end in week one against the Bucks, but really got outplayed at home in week one. Of course, Oakland had the thrilling victory over New Orleans. And sure enough, Atlanta goes cross country and defeats Oakland on the road. It actually looked really good. I watched a lot of that game on the Red Zone channel because uh, it was one of the few late games. And um, so my Falcons may actually be decent. We'll have to see. Um, but really just a top-heavy scoring, not a ton of points. Um, obviously, uh Again, space cadet here. Injury risk won last week. They got their first week last week. So scratch that. I'm not going to edit it out. Again, I'm a little spacey today for whatever reason. Injury risk, risk loses their first game. They're at 128. And the Travelers get their first game, 168 to 128. Apologies for rambling. Um, the only thing I'll note there is that, of course, Kelvin Benjamin, who was on the Travelers bench in week one, He's just going to be nasty. Like I said a minute ago, the, the whole Carolina offense is going to be awesome. I mean, I think Carolina was up big, and he didn't have any catches. And then, you know, second quarter or second half, Kelvin just had some amazing plays. So, he, excuse me, he's going to be great this year. So back in the lineup, of course, goes Kelvin Benjamin and just well-rounded scoring all around. And, again, correction from what I said earlier, uh, the Travelers get their first win. They're 1-1, one and, one and, and um, injury risk falls to 1-1 one one after getting their first win last week. Okay, so let's look at the standings. As always, um, early in the year, only two games. The Stallions at 2-0, and o, third and Oolong 2-0. and o. Let's look at the all-important points this early in the year. Total points is really more indicative of how your season's going to go than your record. Um, the Travelers clearly with the most points after two weeks, and they had the tough luck loss in week one. So they're one and one in spite of having the most points. Everyone else is pretty much bunched. You see this 330, 320 group here, um, and uh, looks like the Mish division scoring a lot more points so far this year. Um, 
Uh, but as you can see, both divisions are pretty much the same. You've got Third and Oolong and the Stallions undefeated. you got Cartel and the Riot. Both Baltimore teams, or both uh, Maryland teams uh, in, the, in the rear. Uh, but as always, it's only a couple weeks into the season. Still 12 weeks left. Uh, don't forget we have the big Thursday night game. I'm actually, this is going to be one of the best Thursday night games of the year. We have the third string quarterback for the Patriots versus Houston. Um, so very interesting game to see how the Patriots do with the third string quarterback. So don't forget to um, you know get your lineups in, watch the injury report, pick up your guys on waivers, and uh, good luck this week. Have a great weekend, everyone.